Hi everyone, my name is Nick, and today we're going to spotlight some common house plants that deserve just as much attention, if not more, than the rare ones. I'm well aware that uncommon, hard to find, rare house plants are all of the rage right now amongst houseplant enthusiasts, and I'm just here to remind you about the common standard ones because they're absolutely incredible, and they're common for a really good reason because they're all really easy to grow. I slept on a couple of these for a couple of years when I first started collecting houseplants, and I really regret that because I think about the jungle that could be if I just tried out these plants a couple years sooner because many of these plants only need a year to become a really large houseplant. So the first one we're gonna talk about today is the Chinese Evergreen. This is an Aglaenema commutatum, and this is the Silver Bay variety. And I guess they call it that because it gets a wonderful bay of silver in the center of the leaves. It's pretty straightforward, but it's a really incredible houseplant. Chinese evergreens, one of the most common houseplants out there on the market. You can walk into pretty much any houseplant store and you're going to find these, which is great because you know what you're gonna get. And this one right here, the Silver Bay, is probably the most standard variety that's on the market. I'd say there's also another one, I think they call like Maria, that's also quite common as well. So I'd say between these two, this one and the other one, uh, that's pretty much one you're going to find in every houseplant store that you walk into. And these are really some of the easiest houseplants to grow. I grow this one on top of my refrigerator, which is probably maybe like eight feet away from a window, maybe even pushing like 10 feet. Uh, and I have it up high, so you can kind of see that's why the leaves are sort of facing downwards. If I flip the plant around, you can see how it looks completely different because all the leaves are kind of just like facing downwards toward the light. But I think it looks incredible that way, the way I have it on top of the refrigerator and all I can see is this beautiful uh, green and gray foliage. I think it's stunning. And these houseplants, like I was saying, are very easy to grow. Of course, all of the common houseplants are going to have different care, but the thing that they all share in common is that they're all ridiculously easy to grow. So I grow my Chinese evergreens by growing them in a uh, very dappled light. I'd say low light is probably what I'm growing them in. Some of them are kind of like um, hidden amongst other plants where they're receiving, you know, some direct sunlight, but it's not for long periods of time. This is not one of those ugly names though. This one is in one of the darkest corners in my home and it's been performing fine. I've had this one for probably about three years at this point. I think I've had this one since before I was doing YouTube. So I've had it for a pretty long time and it's done pretty well for me. So I'm, I'm thrilled. It's just one little plant in the pot and I think it's, it's a stunning plant. So it does not fail me. And oh, watering. I don't water these plants very often as it is on top of my refrigerator. I, I really don't water often at all. It's not one of those plants that will give you a telltale sign. Like it won't really wilt if you've it will, it will wilt if you've gone too far on underwatering, but it might be a little too far gone at that point. But these plants are very, very hardy, so they won't really show signs of underwatering. So I'd say I'm probably watering this one right here. Mind you, it's in a large ceramic pot, probably every two, maybe pushing three weeks sometimes if I'm being very forgetful. But I wouldn't say I'm watering this plant once a month. I'd say that would be a little bit too long. But about every two weeks, maybe twice a month is kind of the golden era, uh, area for growing these Aglianemas. So incredible houseplant, so many varieties out there. This is just probably the most common one, but I'd say any of them would do. They're fantastic. Just nobody should forget about them because they're perfect houseplants to grow in some peculiar areas in your home that you want some greenery like on top of my refrigerator. So it works out perfectly. Um, another fantastic plant that falls into the lower light end of the spectrum is the ZZ plant, or the Zamiacolcus zamiafolia. So this is just a little one right here. I still have this sitting in its plastic pot. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Um, and just a side story before I get too involved, you might see it's got little nips on it. I put it on our um, kitchen table, hoping that it would grow there, and then my roommate's cat very quickly decided to take a few bites out of it. So we moved it somewhere else, and that somewhere else is actually in the built-in shelves in our hallway, which receives zero sunlight. I'd say it's in practical darkness throughout the day because it's there's no window within 20 feet of that space and there's just no natural light remotely in the area as it's a built-in shelf into the wall. So this is the only plant I would ever consider growing in an area like that because this is really the only plant that uh, can withstand no light. When I used to work at the plant shop, I would always recommend this plant to people if they were looking for a plant for like their bathroom with no windows or like a lofted bedroom that has no windows or an office cubicle because this is really the only plant that would thrive in that setting. So um, having been growing this one in you know the darkness setting for incredibly long, I probably had this one for about six months at this point. So not incredibly long, but you can see <laughs> We're half a year in and it, it looks fine. It looks fine. I don't think it's grown more than a shoot or two, but 
uh, it, lo it looks totally fine. So my number one rule when it comes to caring for my ZZ plant is if you water it more than you pay your rent, it's too much. Now this one in this little four inch pot, if I was growing this in a like medium to bright light setting, of course I'd have to water it more than once a month. I'd have to water it probably every uh, two weeks, if not once a week. But in the settings that I'm typically growing the ZZ plants in my home, which there's another one on top of my refrigerator, there's one on another shelf that receives no natural light at all. And this one here, I am not watering any of these more than once a month. In fact, I don't ever think about watering them. I just kind of wait till they tell me. Their telltale sign is if you look at some of the thickest uh, bulb things, not bulb, but um, you know, the, the stalks are kind of bulbous at the bottom. And if you start to look at those and you see them start to get kind of wrinkly, you know it's been probably a little bit too long and you need to consider watering it. So admittedly, that's how I know when to water my ZZ plants. I let them tell me. Now, could I be a little bit more of a helicopter parent with them? Yes, I could, but this is one plant where you really don't need to be. And I do not see anybody really killing these from underwatering. I'd say the only way you're gonna kill these is from overwatering. So a really excellent house plant for uh, any any space in your home, but uh, perfect for those low light spaces that you really would like to grow a house plant in. And, and if any other plant really is impractical or if you're, you've been trying to grow other plants in a space and it's just not working out because they all seem to be dying because of lack of light, Try a ZZ plant. If a plastic plant's not gonna work for you, go for a ZZ plant. So this is exactly what you're looking for. So really great house plant, once again, one that nobody should be sleeping on. And I should get a couple more of these to have around my home because I can green up a couple more spaces that have absolutely no sunlight. Let's talk about this one next. This is a super common house plant. I mean, all of these are because that's what this video is about, but this is a golden pothos. This is like really one of the top five most common houseplants out there and everybody should have this. And this is one of those houseplants that I personally slept on for a couple of years. I feel like I used to see these in the houseplant store and I was like, oh, I always see those on TV. Like, I don't want one of those. Like, that's just so basic if that's what they're using on all the, the television sets. Forget about it. Now, of course, they use them for good reason because nobody's caring for these plants on television sets. Unrelated. But I just saw this plant and was just at first like, mm -mm, not my thing. I, I don't care for it. It wasn't until I started growing them in my home where I fell in love with them. In fact, I don't think I ever even got one until I think I was at like a, a greenhouse sale many, many years ago. And I, I think I got one dirt cheap that already had some vines to it. And that was the one, I think it cost me like a dollar. And it, it took that to get me to buy this plant. And that is so horrible. Like I wish that I tried this plant out sooner than that because pothos, is one of my favorite house plants. There's so many types of pothos and many other plants that are very closely related and have the similar appearance. And these are the ones that are going to turn your home into a jungle. If you are looking to have that urban jungle, jungle-o vibe, this is the plant you want. This is going to turn your home into that indoor jungle that we are all striving to have. Of course, this one here is a little small. I actually grabbed this one because it's the smallest pothos I have in my home. All the other ones I have are either like, uh, 10 feet long or growing up a trellis attached to the wall. So this is really the only one that's mobile But I give this one another year or so and if I increase the light because this is growing in rather low light This plant can really grow I'd say up to a foot a month if not longer than that during the growing season So you get one of these you have it for a year and you might be shocked at the incredibly long trailing house plant that you have in the short amount of time these are super easy to grow. Uh, they can really grow in any light setting. Like I was saying, this one's in lower light, so it's growing slower than if I had it in brighter light, it would grow faster. Of course, the more light you give a plant, the more often you're gonna water it. The less light you give a plant, the less often you're gonna have to water it. And these have a great telltale sign when to water them because their leaves are not the thickest, uh, you know, they're not holding onto so much moisture that when they do lose enough moisture in the pot, the plant will start to wilt. And right when I see that wilt, I go ahead and water the plant. And it's a great way for me to not have to check the plant soil every day. Once I just visibly see this plant just starting to wilt, I can confidently go ahead and water this plant and know by the end of the day or the next morning that the plant is going to look just as it did when it was plump and full of water. A really incredible house plant. So many varieties out there. Golden Pothos, this one right here is just the most standard one out there. So it's the one I wanted to highlight today, but I think all pothos are not ones to be slept on because they're incredible house plants. And very closely related to pothos and often uh, 
uh, misnamed or mislabeled as pothos as well, or people just tend to call it pothos because it looks so similar, is the Syndapsis pictus. So people often call this the silver pothos or the silver philodendron, and there's many other common names as well, but we're going to talk about it as the Syndapsis pictus today because that's its Latin name. And w once again, an incredible houseplant. If I had to pick one plant out of this video to be like, this is the one, this is the one for me. Like, I am obsessed with Syndapsis pictus. I have these all over my house. This is the fastest growing uh, vining plant that I'm aware of that are commonly sold in houseplant stores. And these really can grow like 15 feet a year. Um, I have one that is kind of hanging back here. It's, it doesn't have much foliage right here, but um, this vine is, oh shoot, it's probably like, 30 feet long, it's so long. It goes all the way around the room and I'm gonna have to get up there and hang these up because um, yeah, they're kind of starting to get in my way, aren't they? But this one is no exception. This one is probably about eight feet long here and I've only had this one for maybe a year and a half. Uh, mind you, it's not in prime growing conditions. If you do hang these like right in a window, it's gonna grow much more than that. But this one's up high on a shelf and just giving me the kind of that cascading vibe that I'm looking for, giving my home that jungalo vibe. The color is absolutely to die for. It's got this lovely dark bluish green foliage that has this lovely silver splashing to it. You can see kind of in the sunlight, it really does shine with iridescence, which is wonderful. And this plant also has a very nice telltale sign as to when it needs water. So just like how the pothos wilts, this one will kind of curl in its leaves. And you can see some of the leaves are just starting to get a little bit curled. So it's probably telling me that within the next couple of days, I'm gonna find myself watering this plant. But it's such a great one because you can just have it hanging up high. And as soon as you see that all of the leaves are starting to get really curly, you can go ahead and water it and it will be back to normal in just a day's time. So a really incredible house plant. If I was ever going to model with a house plant, this would be the one. I just think it's so incredible. It, it's so lovely. One of my favorite house plants. Uh, I don't care how common or readily available it is. This is probably always going to be in my top five, top 10 favorite house plants because it is well deserving. Nobody should be sleeping on this incredible house plant. What are we going to talk about next? Um, let's talk about this one. Okay. So this is Hoya Carnosa. This is just a standard Hoya Carnosa. There are so many varieties out there. Many people have the Crimson Princess and the Crimson Queen, which have the variegation, but this is just your plain green version. And of course, your plain green versions are ten tend to be the ones that get skipped over the most. But I think that Hoya Carnosa is so incredible. Whenever I see a nice full plant of just plain green Hoya Carnosa, I am just like, ow, like that is hot. And I am just into it. So I, I love anything with like the little silver splashings, just like the Syndapsis pictus. This Hoya does have very similar um, splashing to the leaves. Of course, very different in the same way, but similar in the fact that it's kind of like this just little uh, spots of like shiny silver. It, it's so wonderful. A really incredible house plant. And like I said, this is the one I feel like out of all the Hoyas, which Hoyas are hot plants right now. Everybody wants Hoyas, but nobody seems to want Hoya Carnosa. Whenever I would get plain green Hoya Carnosa in the shop, uh, it didn't sell as well as any of its counterparts. So this is one that I think is so incredible. I just love the, the succulent waxy foliage. You can see some of the new growth coming in right here. It's absolutely adorable the way it starts to kind of get ahead of itself as the leaves start to form. A great vining plant. You can grow it up a little bamboo trellis or a stick, or you can let it trail as I'm doing this one here, as this one's just sitting on the side of a shelf. And I think it looks great the way it's just kind of hanging over. It's, it's so wonderful. But yeah, plain green Hoya, no one should be uh, skipping out on these. They're super easy to care for. I'd say easier than the variegated ones because they don't require as much sunlight. So um, watering is super easy with Hoyas too. You really don't need to pay that much attention to them. I'm probably watering them like every like seven days if it's in a pot this size. And if they're in a larger pot, I'm probably even pushing that to like every 10 or 14 days. They do have rather fine roots. So you don't want to go too long on underwatering. I wouldn't treat it like my ZZ plants or my Agli Namas because uh, that would probably be a death sentence for some of these plants in the pot as not all of them will probably be able to withstand that type of drought especially if there's uneven watering going on uh just a couple things to bear in mind but this is just such an incredible house plant i think everybody should have a hoya carnosa and if you're a hoya collector and you don't have a plain green hoya Carno carnosa yet what are you doing so just throwing that out there um okay so this is a really great one as well this is a Peperomia, and I love Peperomia. I collect Peperomia. If you watch me here regularly, you probably know that. And this is like <laughs> probably the most basic Peperomia in my collection. This is Peperomia clusiifolia, red margin. 
is what they call it, I'm pretty sure. So it looks very similar to Peperomia obtusifolia, and this is probably often mislabeled as that, but it's a slightly different one. It's Clusiae folia because it looks more like a Clusia, which is a type of plant that you might be familiar with as well. It's often sold in houseplant stores. And it's got this lovely red edge to it. I think it's one that's really incredible. And I love the deep green foliage. I think that this one looks a little bit more put together than Obtusifolia, which of course I love Obtusifolia. I love Peperomias in general, but I just appreciate Clusiifolia a little bit more. And this is an incredibly easy one to grow. I grow this one next to my kitchen sink. So it's probably like seven feet away from a window. And it's kind of hidden among other among other plants. There's like a, a lemon lime philodendron, and a Cebu blue pothos that kind of hang in front of the peperomias that I have there and kind of shade some of them out. But this one has been performing really well. Um, I probably water it like once a week. I just give it a little splash from the, the sink hose that's right there. And it's super easy to care for. I love its appearance. I think it's great. Even the little leaf that got a little, a little messed up when it was forming, I think still looks great. So yeah, a really incredible peperomia. If you see these, I'd say give them a try because they're probably going to be less than $10. And it's just a nice little plain plant that's not very visually demanding, but it um, still deserves a place in your home because I think it really just is one that I look at and I, it just makes me smile. I think it it's a great, like I said, it's a very put together looking plant. So I just, I appreciate anything that looks put together. It's not perfect, mind you. Mine has a lot of character, as you can see, a lot of character. But that's once again what I really like about it. So super easy plant, doesn't require a lot of sunlight. Probably would prefer more sunlight. I'm sure that red margin that you can barely see on my plant would be much more pronounced if I was giving this a little bit more sunlight, but I don't seem to care and this plant doesn't seem to care either. So a really, really incredible Peperomia. One of the most common ones out there and it's one that everybody should be growing because it's fantastic. And I think we only have one more to talk about today. So this one is save one of the best for last. This is a staghorn fern, and this thing is everywhere. I feel like every time I'm in a houseplant store, they have staghorn ferns. And of course, they're not usually sold like this. Mine is mounted onto a piece of wood, which is something I did myself. Sometimes you will find them sold on pieces of wood or plaques or something to hang on your wall, but you can so easily just buy the fern for much cheaper than the plaques cost and buy a piece of wood and some sphagnum moss and fishing line things you probably already have mostly around your home and make one of these and it's super fun. So um, staghorn ferns are ferns. I know they don't really look like ferns. Um, they're much more hardy though. So maybe you're hearing fern and you're like, absolutely not Nick, I kill ferns because I was the fern killer. I used to try growing like uh, maiden hairs and button ferns. Oh, I've killed so many button ferns I can't even count. Boston ferns, I've tried all of them and they are not easy plants to grow. I think I have like one maiden hair fern in my home that I've somehow managed to grow over the past couple of years. But the ferns that are much thicker, um, primarily staghorn, as we're the one, that's the one we're talking about today, perform so much better. So they can handle a little bit of drought. And I love that because I'm not able to keep up with watering my plants every two or three days. But the staghorn fern doesn't mind if I pull it off the wall as I do with many of my other plants because most of my other mounted plants are Hoyas and Dischidia or Dischidia and Ripsalis and things that don't need to be watered regularly. So I end up watering this plant when I water those ones and it does just fine. I have another fern on my wall, a crocodile fern that does okay, but I can say it doesn't withstand drought nearly as much as the staghorn fern here. So a really incredible drought tolerant house plant. Now they do appreciate a little bit more light. As you can see, they are a little bit more thicker foliage heavy plants than other like frilly fine ferns. So these do appreciate a little bit more light. I grow mine a couple feet off of a southern facing window. And I'd say if you're growing it within a couple feet of an east or a north facing window or within like six feet of a south or west facing window, you're probably gonna do okay with growing these plants. I would just say that if you're gonna put it on the wall, you need to be mindful of making sure you're getting enough light. I struggled with growing these for so long. The first couple of years I tried growing them because I was just putting them on kind of like obsolete areas in my home that weren't receiving adequate sunlight. And as soon as I tried growing this in an area that was actually receiving sunlight, it started flourishing for me. So a really incredible house plant. Uh, staghorn ferns, I think, are not only just incredible plants, but they're pieces of art. And it's a great conversation piece and a great gift too, honestly. If you're looking to get someone who's not into plants, into plants, then I think a staghorn fern is a really great way to do it. They look like vegan antlers and I just think it's so cool. Such a great um, way to display plants in your home and it saves on surface space too. So I absolutely love it. And 
I don't think I talked too much about how I water these. I really just take them off the wall and run them under water in the sink. I make sure that the, the moss gets all wet. You can even wet the leaves if you'd like. I don't care too much about wetting the wood, you know, because it's going on my wall, but uh, I will just make sure that I really soak the moss and that's really it. You don't have to dunk it or anything. I really just spray it. It's, it's fine. I wouldn't just use a spray bottle though and spray it on the wall though. That's not going to wet it enough. You would have to pull it off the wall and really make sure that you're soaking the moss. So just something to bear in mind there. But I have to talk about staghorn ferns today because it's such an incredible houseplant. And like I said, I walk into every plant shop and they have these, whether they're in a, in a pot, like a four inch plastic pot, like I'd purchased this one or already mounted for you, as you can see, like on the wood here. So staghorn ferns are great. If you're a fern killer, like I used to be, try a staghorn fern, you will not be disappointed. So that's going to do it for today's video. Common houseplants that deserve just as much attention, if not more than the rare ones. And you can see these are a lot of incredible houseplants and... I would say that these, what, seven, seven houseplants, seven houseplants, everybody should have in their home. And if you're into just regular plants, or even if you're like a hardcore, rare plant collector, you should have these. I guarantee you, you will not be upset with them. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you don't already, follow me on Instagram at Philly Foliage, subscribe to my channel, and I will see you guys in my next video. Have a great day.